What's up everyone, it's Tatiana, your favorite surgical tech, and today marks week two of Suture Sunday. I'm the greatest in the game. -A -A Everybody knows my name. Hey, T A. Put your hands in the air, fellas. A -A and all the ladies do the same. Hey. Every week I go over the details and facts about suture, needles, and other related supplies that you may use with your suture. This week we're covering suture classifications. Suture can be classified as absorbable or non-absorbable. The difference between the two, one will be absorbed by the patient's tissue over a certain amount of time, or the tissue will resist enzymatic digestion, which is just a fancy word for absorption. Now things can get a little more specific when it comes to absorbable suture. The material can be made from natural sources. Natural absorbable suture is digested by enzymes that attack the suture and destroy it over time. Synthetic absorbable suture consists polymers of petroleum-based products. Now these are broken down slightly different. Water within the tissue penetrates the strands and breaks down the synthetic fibers polymer chain. Now let me just give a disclaimer, okay? <laughs> Although this is great information to know and learn, especially when you're studying for your certification exam, details like how suture breaks down is not something that you'll typically need to know on a day-to-day -day basis in the real world. Now that I've cleared that up, let's move forward. Next, suture can be classified as monofilament or multifilament. With the prefix mono, these types of sutures are made as single thread-like structures. Since these sutures are single-stranded, they typically do not harbor bacteria and will often be used in areas where there's a higher risk of infection. These types of suture also glide through tissue more easily than multifilament sutures, which results in minimal tissue damage. However, they do not hold knots as well and will typically have to be tied multiple times. So with these types of sutures, you'll typically see surgeons making a lot of throws to make sure the suture is secure. Some examples of monofilament sutures would include monocryl or biosin, same type of material, just a different company. Um, also, it would include proline, or you'll also hear it called Surgipro, depending on the brand, or also your nylon. Now with the prefix multi, the suture consists of multiple thread-like structures that's braided or twisted into one single strand. Because of multifilament sutures capillarity, they have a higher capability of harboring bacteria, as well as retaining tissue fluids that can be passed down along the entire length of the suture. This is the reason these types of sutures typically will not be used in the presence of infection. Because of the pliability, multifilament suture have a stronger tensile strength and also holds knots more securely. Now examples of some multifilament suture would be your Vicryl, which matches me today. Or they would also call this Polyzorb, the other company name, um, as well as your Nylon, Nylon is also a multi-filament suture, and your Ethabon. And Ethabon's sister suture would be, Ethabon's competitor would be Tycron. Both multi-filament, both made of the same uh, coated, braided, polyester material, just two different brand names. And we can't forget our barb suture, and that acts like anchors into the tissue. And because of those anchors, it classifies this type of suture as knotless. Now the different types of suture material have distinguishing characteristics. The list ranges from capillarity, diameter size, tensile strength, elasticity, memory, and how easily they pass through tissue. Now I know I have covered quite a bit of vocabulary so far in this video. So get a pen and paper, your notepad, or even your notes in your phone and take note of some of these. First is capillarity. This is the capability of the suture to harbor bacteria and tissue fluids. Next is pliability. This is the ease of suture securing a knot. You can also refer to this as flexibility. 
Next is tensile strength. That's the amount of force it takes to break a suture. And finally, memory. That's the ability of the suture to return back to its original shape. So types of suture that always have a lot of memory are nylon and uh, prolines. If you take them out their packaging and you try to pull them straight with no like force and let go, it springs right back into the shape that it was in the suture package. That's memory. Now guys, I can get even more detail with the classification of suture, but I personally think these are the bases that you should know and then further expand once you understand. Now, if there was anything that I covered that was confusing or maybe raised additional questions, please drop a comment below and I will either reply directly to your comment or if necessary, I'll record a whole separate video answering it specifically. As always, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video or my page with fellow surgical techs, other surgical tech students that you know, or maybe someone that's just looking for more information about surgical technology. You can follow me on all social media platforms. My Instagram is underscore for the love of surgery. My TikTok is just for the love of surgery. My Twitter, which I've recently created and don't really use is love of surgery and my facebook page slash group is also for the love of surgery but it's kind of repetitive information that's on my instagram you can also check out my revamped website which is www.fortheloveofsurgery.com i'm slowly adding and updating information i do have a list of schools that either i have suggested or other uh, trusted instructors that I know have suggested or even some students um, and past surgical tech students that suggested um, their school as well. So I'm making a running list that will be updated regularly and that will also be on my site. So please check it out www.fortheloveofsurgery and if you have any suggestions of what I should be adding on there please shoot me a DM on preferably Instagram, or even shoot me an email at contactfortheloveofsurgery.com. Don't forget, share this video with a friend, and until next time, peace. <laughs> I'm the greatest in the game. -A -A Everybody knows my name. Put your hands in the air, fellas. And all the ladies.